Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I've got some pretty interesting news today on AMD's new Radeon 7. But first, check out today's sponsor, Mashdrop. They're a group buy website with some amazing deals on gaming hardware. It's free to sign up and they've got new deals all the time. So check that out in the description below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, there's some peculiar information on AMD's new Radeon 7 GPU. Specifically, the AMD is going to be selling the new graphics card exclusively. Originally reported on the German Tom's Hardware, who spoke with multiple board partners and found that none of them had plans for their own designs. Now obviously that doesn't necessarily mean they won't eventually, but you'd think that board partners would at least know something by the announcement, yet they don't even seem to think they'll get a chance to sell their reference design under their branding like they've done in the past. Plus, Tom's Hardware quoted an unnamed Chinese source who stated a similar opinion. The downside here is that if it doesn't happen, that means there's no chance for cheaper third-party cards, and $700 is officially the price. <laughs> Though I will say that with AMD selling it, we're pretty much guaranteed to get it at MSRP, so that's a bonus, I guess? Okay, it's kind of like getting hit in the face by a stranger, only to find out he thought you were someone else. At least he didn't keep hitting you, but it still hurts. Another thing that points to this being exclusively sold by AMD is that the company confirmed in an interview with Hard OCP that they will, in fact, be selling the Radeon 7 on AMD.com. Basically, this could be something similar to the Frontier Edition Radeon Vega, but more aimed at gamers. Oh, and speaking of that Hard OCP interview, Radeon 7 is confirmed to have a maximum TDP of 300 watts, and it will require two A pin connectors. Probably the most interesting bit from the interview was where they discussed the RAM. As many of you know, Radeon 7 is a pretty insane 16 gigabytes of expensive HBM memory, which led many to believe it either needed it to prevent a memory bottleneck with Vega's architecture, or it's unnecessary and should be cut down for a cheaper version. Well, according to the general manager of Radeon's business unit, the reason they included 16 gigabytes is that current games at high resolutions like The Division 2 and Battlefield 5 at 4K actually uses more than 8 gigabytes. Now, whether that's true or not, I'm really not sure. Games are definitely requiring more and more RAM as resolutions get higher and textures get more detailed. Whether the industry will need as high as 16 gigabytes is definitely another story, though. What's odd is that he also referenced to quote creative workloads, which can be confusing since this absolutely is their gaming card. They're just also going for other market sectors at the same time. I guess they didn't get the memo that Nvidia's Titan cards aren't their best selling GPUs? I don't know. Of course, I do somewhat kid just because we don't know 100% what the performance of this is going to be. The next story for today is also concerning the upcoming graphics card, and it's kind of some unfortunate news. See, it doesn't impact gamers in any way, but could have given a small subset of users a great reason to buy the card. But it doesn't seem to be happening. And that's FP64 Double Precision Compute, which is something a few different industries need, but according to the AMD rep, allowing it would cannibalize their more expensive MI50. Now, that could be good news in that it shows the company is serious about this being more of a gaming card and could hopefully compete with the 2080, but we shall see. Lastly for today is a new GPU that's actually kind of impressive. It's the ASUS ROG Matrix, and it's a 2080 Ti with, wait for it, an integrated AIO. Yeah, we're talking the pump, radiator, water block, and all were fit into the actual graphics card shroud itself, and it was all fit into a triple slot design. Plus, ASUS actually claims the cooler brings equivalent cooling to an external 240mm AIO, which if true, is seriously impressive. Of course, all of this doesn't come cheap, which means I'm definitely out, but for those who can afford the $1600 price tag, le let me borrow it, P please, please? So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Are you excited of AMD's new GPU, or do you think it's just a stopgap to quickly compete with the 2080 until they can get something better out? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.